Hello, welcome to the restart of the Tech Talk series. We'll call this number one. Um, I've titled it Traps for the Unwary. Um, we discussed many times on the user group how to go about comparing loudspeakers under dealer uh, demonstration conditions. And by that, I imagine a situation where you go to your local uh, hi-fi store and you are presented with hypothetically, two loudspeakers, uh, A and B. And you are sitting here um, going to critique these two loudspeakers. Now, setting aside all other considerations of the type of music or speech or sounds or whatever, uh, the duration, the listening replay level, the acoustics of the room, your mood, your experience, all of that set aside, I want to draw your attention to one serious trap for the listener. And it was very eloquently um, written up by Dudley Harwood, the founder of the Harbour Company, back in the mid-1970s. In his article, Some Factors in Loudspeaker Quality, it's an extremely dense piece of work, this. And even now... Uh, 30 years on uh, in his seat, um, I'm still discovering fresh insights into his, his um, enormous knowledge. He talks about A-B testing. That's what we're doing here. We're com comparing A with B. And he says, Now, the alarming fact is that A-B testing may, under certain circumstances, give rise to completely wrong results when comparing the sound quality of two loudspeakers. Wow, that's, uh, that's quite shocking. He says, if pink noise is used as a convenient source, pink noise sounds like, well, white noise sounds like and pink noise, much softer, sounds like So, if pink noise is used as a convenient source, although it could be white noise, or it could be music or speech or anything, in fact, and a deep, narrow crevasse produced in it, or is a feature of the loudspeaker itself, it has been shown that the effect will be almost inaudible. Okay, so what does he mean? What he means is, if we take the frequency response chart of a typical uh, audio component, be it a loudspeaker or a, um, any part of the chain, actually, and here is the ideal perfect loudspeaker but we deliberately introduce in that frequency response a deep crevasse a deep notch depending on certain conditions that notch may be completely inaudible and the sort of conditions that it depends on are how deep it is how many dbs down and how wide it is, which is generally expressed by a, a number called Q. So experiments have been carried out by the likes of Buckland back in the early 60s, the audibility of uh, frequency response irregularities. This is another very dense paper, um, which has some quite shocking conclusions, but they're very much in line with Harwood's. So if we go back to what Harwood said, uh, if pink noise is used as a convenient source and a deep narrow crevasse produced in it, or is a feature of the loudspeaker, it has been shown that the effect will be almost inaudible. That was confirmed by earlier work. And also, it's easy to prove this yourself. If you download and install a program like Audacity, a simple audio editor, you can you can create this yourself. You can either take some existing music or you can generate some noise. You can knock a hole in it, a notch like that, and you can do an A-B comparison. Cost is zero. It's quite interesting to validate what earlier researchers have said. Um, if this is listened to for, say, half a minute, and then the crevasse is switched out, so we go back to the flat, the nice flat uh, response, like that.
like so. What do you think the what do you think the outcome is? What do you think your auditory exper experience would be? Well, if it's listened to for half a minute, as if the program were being used to judge, and then the crevasse is switched out so that a uniform, i.e. flat spectrum, is produced, the ear, that's my ear, in your ear, everybody's ear, because it's a feature of human hearing, will hear a strong coloration at the frequency of the crevasse. Well, the crevasse is gone because it was here, we filled it in, but the, the energy that would have been sucked out in that crevasse now appears to us, when we take it away, to be an excess of energy in that spectrum where the crevasse existed. In other words, to our ear, it sounds like a peak, a, a, a huge excess of energy. Now, he proposed that there were two mechan mechanisms at work in human hearing. One of them, the conscious one, um, ignores the crevasse, but the subconscious one detects it quite clearly, but is suppressed by the conscious uh, hearing mechanism within the brain. So that when the crevasse is removed, the subconscious one, the, the, the dominance of these two, the conscious and the subconscious, flips. So that when the crevasse is removed, the subconscious one now comes up and says, well, if the previous condition sounded okay, then this condition, the no crevasse, must be highly coloured. So the problem we have here, and I, I'm only just touching on this, is... If you are in a situation where one loudspeaker has got something like this, let's say loudspeaker A has this character, or let's say this is loudspeaker B, and I'll draw over here loudspeaker A, and loudspeaker A does not have this notch, and you sitting at your listening position make a comparison between loudspeaker A and B, if you listen to this one first, for say half a minute, and then you switch over to this one, this one will appear to be highly coloured in comparison with that one. But the opposite may not apply. If you listen to this one first, and you listen to this, you may or may not hear the dip according to the nature of this crevasse. So the problem you have as a consumer, before you can even start to really begin the process of critiquing, the order in which you compare loudspeakers is absolutely critical. And how would you as a consumer know that your loudspeaker had this characteristic as opposed to a flat response? Well, that's another whole massive issue because you really need to look at the frequency responses of these um, the loudspeakers or e ideally measure them with a microphone here so it's, it's, it's able to produce the frequency response graphs before you can set about comparing them because you could very easily end up buying this because this sounds coloured in comparison. Anyway, hope that stimulates um, some uh, discussion about this. It's only the tiniest microcosm of the whole issue. Thanks for watching.